I'm Chad Sparks in the community. And today, when we say community, we really mean it. I have a guest with me that kind of is, we would say he espouses and exudes all things family and community. <laughs> and you're going to find out why. In fact, we're going to show some graphics and some illustrations, talk about this great man's past and also many of the accomplishments, many of the things that he is doing today that's really, really making a mark on our families and communities right here in Bloomington Normal and surrounding areas. With me today is attorney Chad Ritchie from the Ritchie Law Office. Chad, thanks for being here. Hey, thanks for having me. Oh, what a blast. And especially for us, for you welcoming us into your office. I'm going to ask you a lot of questions today. Sure. As, as you know, we have a big event coming up. You're sponsoring it. We're grateful yeah. for that. And there's going to be some bingo players coming from your office. And if they win, they have to share the they have to share all the proceeds with you. So we'll make <laughs> that's sure the that, deal. that is that's gotta be the deal. Okay, well good. So we're gonna learn a lot about you and what you do. One thing that I want to make note of, I don't know that we've ever done a video with props, but Chad, today we have props, and this is yeah. we're saving the best for last. So you just have to remember that this is here and we'll be reminded that we have to talk about it. I think that's called a teaser. That is a teaser. <laughs> You're exactly right. Yes. Okay. Well, Very good. well and, and that that's fun for us to talk about. Tell me about your family and your involvement in the community because, Chad, you're active. I mean, you're out there, and I think it's because you serve so many families. Is that right. true? Exactly, yeah. We've we've done estate planning over the last few years for over 500 uh, families, so that's a lot of people over the years. Okay, we have to figure this. So, so there's 365 days in a year. You can't count weekends. You're meeting a lot of people. Right. We do about 100 estate plans a year for the last five or so years. Now, in, in, again, I'm going to jump here for a second. Mm -hmm. You weren't always in estate planning. No. So I've been an attorney for almost 20 years. It'll be 20 years in November. We should. We, we feel like we should blow off fireworks <laughs> or have cake. Or, we should have cake. We should have yeah. cake. Yes. <laughs> Maybe later. Okay. So so congrats on that. That's a, big, that's a big achievement. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's, I, couldn't, I can't believe it's been 20 years, honestly. Well, we, we, we're getting grayer, right? <laughs> we're yeah. a little gray yeah. here. Right. <laughs> Okay, so 20-year anniversary, didn't always do estate planning, you are now, you're meeting a lot of families. Mm -hmm. Okay, when they come in, and I'm assuming when, when, when they sit down, they have a goal in mind. Right. Okay, and that's, I mean, obviously that's why they're, why they're coming. You said in estate planning, there's really two ways to do this. There's right. will-based and, am I saying this right, trust-based? Right. Okay, right. teach me about that, teach our, our viewers about sure. that. Sure, so when people think about estate planning, a lot of different things come to mind for various people. And, and people, like I, I mentioned to you, think, oh, well, I don't need an estate plan because I don't have an estate because I don't have millions of dollars or whatever. But if everybody has an estate, if you own something, you have an estate. And so estate planning is basically just saying, what's going to happen to your assets um, and to your things upon your passing? And also, if you become um, disabled or mentally incapacitated, we have documents to, to make sure that you're taken care of, you've got the right people in place to take care of you with power of attorney documents. So when we meet with people the first time, um, we, we tell them, hey, estate planning comes in two major forms, ma major categories. Will-based plans, where a will is your main estate planning document. A will is a simpler estate plan. Um, but like I say, if you, if you can do simple, that's always better. Um, or a trust-based estate plan. Trusts have a lot more flexibility and uh, you can control your assets a lot more with trusts, but it is a little bit more complex of an estate plan. And so, you mentioned that, and that was, that was interesting. How many people would you say are, are on a percentage basis would go will versus trust? Is, is one more popular than the other? Um, is it like would, a 60-40 split? Yeah, or? I would say it, it just depends um, on your family situation. Like okay. um, if, if you have a blended family where you have kids from previous marriages, sometimes that leans us towards a trust, um, but, um, and, then other, and, and then your assets too. If, if you have what we call a taxable estate, which is an estate over $4 million in Illinois, that may lead us towards a trust. So we really have to look at all factors, but I would say for people that come into my office, it's probably a 50-50 split wow, between okay. wills and trusts. So you said there's really kind of like four stages when it comes to a will, and and we, we're we proof of this. So my family did this. We, we had children, small children, mm -hmm. and we decided to, to get a will, and it's completely outdated now. Uh, I, they went from like toddlers to college students. Right. So that that changes. And you said there's kind of a, a tiered system. You got to talk about this right. because for anybody who's watching, they would say that's us. I'm so I'm assuming. Right. So the first stage is what we call the young family stage. You have kids. Um, you just had kids. They're minors. They're you know still in school or they're just you know toddlers. You want to make sure you have at least a will 
that has a trust in there in case something happens to both of the parents, uh, the kids are taken care of with trusts and guardians. Then I would say your stage, which is the college, uh, college stage. And your stage now. And my stage. Okay. So you've named guardians for your kids in your previous wills or estate plans. You have children's trust and so forth. You still may, may need a children's trust for your kids if something happened to, to both parents because who thinks it's a good idea for 20-year-olds, 20 20-somethings 20 to get a couple million dollars or whatever it may be. <laughs> So usually we still have a trust, but you, you may want your children or so to be your power of attorneys or stuff like that. So there's going to be updates that need to be made for sure. sure. So that's the second. So about 20 years after the young family, we look at kind of this college age where your kids are in their 20s. The next stage is when people are approaching retirement. And so I would say another 20 years, um, you're kind of in your late 50s, early 60s, you're going through uh, what you're planning with retirement. and estate planning naturally comes up there too. So we see a lot of people there at that stage. Stage four would be probably another maybe 15, 20 years after that, uh, where people are maybe in their late 70s, 80s, and they want to adjust some things as well. So, Makes sense. you know, those are the kind of the four life stages, but we uh, recommend, you know, everybody think about their estate plan at least once a year, just to see if things have changed, if there's been any life events or new assets or whatever that would maybe make your old, your existing estate plan maybe a little bit out of date. You said you've, you had a crazy year. I mean, you're meeting a lot of people. You brought a new attorney on. Mm -hmm. Right. So we um, brought, a, I, we have a new attorney. So it's just been me for the last, what, so many years here sure. at the Law Office. So uh, we have Angela Skinner at the office. She's been an attorney in our community for 13 years. And so she is now transitioning to estate planning as well. Here's the prop. And I learned about this when we did our webinar. Yep. I had no clue what all was involved in this. So we had to kind of make this the centerpiece. So this is the estate plan binder. Mm -hmm. It really has a lot of information. You can see this here, and, and we could even open it up if we need to, but there's a lot of information. Tell me about this because as I understand, Chad, and I think everyone would like to know, anyone who sees you gets this. Right. Yep. So every estate plan client that we have, once they're done with their estate plan documents, so they, they see us for the initial consultation, we decide will versus trust, we may need another um, meeting to, if they have a trust-based plan and, and or will-based plan to get everything finalized. Um, and then they come back, review everything, and sign their documents. Once those documents are signed, we will make a complete set of copies for our clients and we'll scan everything so there's PDF versions of everything. The, uh, the, the paper copies we will put in this binder and this binder is made for your state plan documents, but it's also made for all of your important um, information about your life, all of the other important documents such as marriage certificates, deeds to your house, life insurance policies, all of these things in one binder. So the, the idea is if there's some, something that happens, there's an emergency, your power of attorney, your, your kids, your family will have this to go to if needed. Everything is here. And I remember when we did that webinar, that was the one thing that stood out to me is that if you can condense everything into one place mm -hmm. and make it so simple that everyone would know, I mean, especially when, when death occurs or when a traumatic event occurs, they know exactly where it's at. What an incredible benefit. I don't know if everybody else does this, but you do it and you do it well. Right. Yeah, we just started doing this officially uh, January of this year of 2022, and everybody loves it. Your dad was a farmer. Right. But also a painter, and you have relics of the various things that he did. It's really kind of a neat story. Uh, he collected Alice Chalmers tractors. Mm -hmm. my, my father loved Alice Chalmers tractors. Uh, he, your, your grandfather was he, a tool collector, right? right? So he was a farmer as well. Okay. And so my dad took over the farm when he was, you know, when he was in his 20s. Um, really? I grew up on a farm uh, in Colfax, or around the Colfax Not too area. far away from us. So, right. Yeah, so my dad passed away about four years ago, and I inherited this tool collection that his dad uh, collected and passed down to him. So it's kind of our family heirloom that we have here on display. And so being a, um, growing up on a farm, having the farm background, uh, we, we do a lot of uh, state planning for farmers and people with farmland owner. I can imagine. Farmland too. As, as everyone knows, and again, as we learn from Chad Ritchie, we also get to learn about the various things going on in the community. One of the biggest ones is our Bloomington Normal free biggest community breakfast in bingo. So we're looking forward to that. We're especially looking forward to spending the morning with all of you, with your great staff, Chad. And again, to be here today, what a pleasure for us, and especially for the time that you took out of your busy schedule 
to do this video and to be able to talk to our community together. Well, thank you, Chad. It's my pleasure. Uh, we always enjoy it. And any chance we get to be together, I think we take advantage <laughs> of that. So thanks for your time. Thanks for what you do for our community. I know a lot of people are walking around today with these binders saying, I'm glad I did it. Mm -hmm. And if you want to do it, by all means, contact Richie Law Office. And I, I really, really am grateful for all that you continue to do for all of us in the community. And, and for all of you, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for viewing our video. And especially for being part of our community, we will see you the next time in the community.